of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the eighth chapter, beginning at the 27th verse. At that time, Jesus went on, went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. For you are sat in your mind, not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. But those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This question which Jesus asked the disciples 
well, who people say that he is, is of course one which is not only found in the Gospel of Mark, and then Peter's confession is actually found at a different time in a different place on uh, the Mount of Transfiguration, where it is a completely different experience. And uh, um, Peter proclaims Jesus as the Messiah. In uh, the Markan account, however, there's what is known as the Messianic secret. And um, when Peter proclaims that Jesus is the Messiah, he then says, shh, don't tell anybody. But then out of that, after that, he then proceeds to, according to Mark, tell persons that he is going to be killed. So he basically starts to speak about his impending passion and subsequent death and resurrection. And Peter is not quite happy to hear all this. So he decides that that's not going to sit with him. So he's going to shut it down. And um, Jesus then says to him, but, you know, your focus is, is slightly different from, from my focus. You're focusing on, on what people would want, but I am focusing on what God wants. And that's, that's what I, I wanted to take us this morning to not focus on what, what people want, but focus on what God wants. Because if we are church and we are representatives of church, then in all honesty, we have to put aside our, our personal agenda and we have to focus more on what God intends for God's church. And that is, that is simply the reality. Because if that were not the case, then Jesus would have said, I agree with you, boy. I want a boy to kill me. I feel that we're going down this road. But the, the text is pointing to the fact that you need to divorce yourself from your personal opinion and your personal agenda. And you need to focus on what God's intention is. You need to focus, it's going down, sorry. You need to focus your attention on what God's agenda is and what God's intention is. And you know what? In a lot of cases, your intention or God's intentions do not mix. Because Jesus is very clear to point out to Peter, you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. So there's this dichotomy. And a few minutes from now, we're going to stand up. Well, we're going to hear because we're going to have it played and we'll probably sing it in our heads. Um, your will be done. Now, is that paying lip service to the situation? Or is that truly surrendering our wills to the will of God? Because that is how we are supposed to operate in every single aspect of our lives. You know, um, I, last week I spoke about the fact that, you know, like you might be in a relationship and you, you check in for somebody and then it's not quite working out. You're like, you done with that. You know, and it, it's the same situation where um, your plans and your intentions and your will might not necessarily be in alignment with God's will and God's intentions. And it means, therefore, that you have to divest yourself of self, which is something we don't do well because we love to play the game of the ego. All of us play the game of the ego. All of us have our own plans, our own intentions, our own wills. And um, sometimes we can't impose them on ourselves, so we like to impose them on others. Um, that is not how it is in God's world. In God's world, we actually surrender our wills and our plans and our intentions. And we, we pay attention and we align ourselves and we, we get in concert with what God wills and what God intention, intends for us. And what God intends not only for us, but what God intends for the whole. That's a bit of a challenge for any human being to, to um, overcome or to get over. Because I have my, my agenda, you have your agenda, we all have our own personal agenda. But that is not God's plan for us and that is not God's intention. So how does 
Peter reconcile what he would like to see and what God wants. But Jesus has to draw it to his attention that, first of all, he's not focusing on God, but he's focusing on his plans. And then he goes a little further and speaks to other people. And he says, if anybody wants to be my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. Deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. So that means that you, div again, you divest yourself of self. So all that you think you are and all that you think you might be, you have to let that go. And you have to, I think this used to be said before, I'm not sure it is said anymore, but you have to humble yourself and let God guide the process, let God guide the way. That is crucial for any human relationship. That is crucial for to our understanding as individuals. That is crucial for our understanding as um, national community, as church, as global community. That the self, the ego, has to take a back seat. And God's will and God's purpose has to be central in all that we undertake, in all that we do, in all that we seek to do. So you have to deny yourself. And it made me think of deny yourself. I'm sure we're thinking, well, that means I can't buy anything that I want. That means I can't have nice things. That means I can't enjoy myself. That's not what it's saying. It is saying that your agenda must take back seat so that God's agenda can be brought to the fore. As I said before, in most cases, our agenda and God's agenda do not line up because what we normally do is we do not check to see what God's agenda is, but we come with our own agenda. But the text is very clear. The text is extremely clear. You are not thinking about divine things but you are thinking about human things. You are not paying attention to what God intends, but you are trying to push your own agenda. So how does this text relate to us as individual, relate to us as body corporate, relate to us as nation, relate to us as world? as we face many challenges in our current experience. Can we honestly say that the positions that we hold are in line with God's positions, God's agenda, God's plan for us? Or are we holding firmly to what we want and what we believe? rather than what God intends. Because in the final analysis, if we're honest with ourselves, our prayer should always be, your will, not mine, be done. Amen.